the story you are about to hear is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. Fatima Cigarettes, best of all king-size cigarettes, brings you Dragnet on both radio and television. You're a detective sergeant. You're assigned a robbery detail. A jewelry salesman is slugged and robbed of $20,000 in precious stones. After months of investigation, you finally discover the man responsible for the holdup. You've got the evidence to prove him guilty. Your job, bring him in. Fatima, America's first largest selling blended cigarette. Now, best of all king size cigarettes. Prove it yourself today. Compare Fatima with any other king size cigarette. One, Fatima's length filters the smoke 85 millimeters for your protection. Two, Fatima's length cools the smoke for your protection. Three, Fatima's length gives you those extra puffs, 21% longer than standard cigarette size. And in Fatima, you get an extra mild and soothing smoke, plus the added protection of Fatima quality. Definitely the best quality in its class, with the same price as the cigarette you are now smoking. Buy Fatima in the bright, sunny yellow pack. Best of all king-size cigarettes. Dragnet, the documented drama of an actual crime. For the next 30 minutes, in cooperation with the Los Angeles Police Department, you will travel step by step on the side of the law through an actual case transcribed from official police files. From beginning to end, from crime to punishment, Dragnet is the story of your police force in action. It was Thursday, July 18th. It was sultry in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of robbery detail. My partner's Ed Jacobs. The boss is Captain Didion. My name's Friday. It was 1.35 p.m. when we got back to the city hall, the interrogation room. Sit down, Mr. Garvey. Yes, yeah, sir. You want to call the captain, Ed, let him know we're back? Okay. Thanks. I'd still like to know what this is all about, Sergeant, dragging me down here in the middle of the day. I've, I've got an Jacobs office. Just a minute, Mr. Yeah, Jacobs. I just got back. Mm-hmm. All of them? Good. Yeah, the interrogation room, right. Let us check in, yeah? Yeah, they're all back. Worked out fine. That's Would good. you please explain what this is about, why you've brought me down here? We think you know why. Well, I don't. I haven't any idea. You take me away from my store on a busy day. You put a police guard on it. You insist on bringing me down here. What's it all about? Tell me. No, you tell us, Mr. Garvey. Tell you about what? A jewel robbery nine months ago, that holdup. What holdup? My store hasn't been robbed. Talk about your friend, Thomas Ashley. Ashley? What about him? We think you remember it nine months ago, parking lot back of the building down on Poise Street. Oh, sure. Some holdup man slugged him, stole his case of samples. I remember it now. Poor Tom, the thief made a big haul, didn't he? And said dime is $20,000 worth. I remember it now. I don't think Tom's gotten over it yet. He was a jewelry salesman for the same company at the time, you know. The same company Tom was working for. Yeah, we know all that. Some of the big bosses thought Tom had a hand in it. They figured it was a put-up job. Nothing was further from the truth. That's all. Sure, I know Tom. He's a close friend of mine. He wouldn't be mixed up in a deal like that. Tom and I worked out of the same office for years. We've had him over the house for dinner. We've even been on vacations together. He's one of the most honest men I know. You sure of all this, are you? Of course I'm sure. That isn't why you called me down here, is it? You don't think Tom had anything to do with that robbery, do you? You don't think he was in on it? He had nothing to do with it. I think you know that as well as we do. Well, then why am I here? There's nothing I can tell you about the holdup. Only what I heard from Tom, what I read in the news. No, you can tell us a lot more, Garvey. We didn't bring you here just past time of day. Tom was slugged and his sample case of stones were taken. That's all I can tell you. You're a liar, mister. What? You engineered the whole thing. We know it and so do you. Was well, this some kind of a joke? If it is, I think it's in very... It's a long way from a joke, Garvey. You planned the job. You got the loot. We can give you chapter and verse. I really think you're serious. You think I robbed Tom? We're past the thinking stage, Garvey. We already told you. We know you robbed him. Now, wait a minute. This thing is ridiculous. The whole idea is ridiculous. I don't know who gave you the so-called information on me, but it's wrong. There's nothing further from the truth. Nobody gave us the information. We got it ourselves. You're really serious, are you? I robbed Tom, and you can prove I did. You're getting the idea. I don't know what to say. It's fantastic. I robbed my best friend Tom Ashley nine months ago. I have $20,000 worth of diamonds, and you can prove it. Every bit of it. What about it? I think you're out of your mind. My name's George Garvey. Are you sure I'm the man you want? There couldn't be a mistake. No, there's no mistake. This thing would be funny if I didn't think you were serious. Let me ask you just one question. Maybe that'll clear it up for you. Yeah? If I held up Tom Ashley, how is it he didn't recognize me? You know better than that, Garvey. What? You didn't hold up Tom Ashley yourself. You had someone do it for you. Oh, well, cloak and dagger, huh? 
I'm afraid this is getting a little too wild for me, Sergeant. Maybe you can waste time making ridiculous charges. I can't. I'm going back to my store. It's a weak bluff, mister. It's not going to do it. Excuse me. Are you sure you two men haven't been drinking? Sit down, Mr. Garvey. I told you I'm going back to my store. Sit down. Look, you have no right to keep me here. These are ridiculous charges. You think I'm one of those cheap hoodlums you're used to dealing with? No, now come off it, mister. You've got a $5,000 car and a $40,000 home. That doesn't reach you a special treatment. You're a thief, and you know it as well as we do. I don't have to take this from you. You haven't got much choice. We just finished five months' legwork proving it. Proving what? All right, now sit down there. You engineered that holdup. We know who you got to do it. We know how it was carried out. We know how you planned on disposing of the diamonds. We know who your fence was. We know what the split was. We know what you did with part of the money. We know how much you got left. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. What can I say? I don't even know what you're talking about. Any way you want it, Mr. Garvey. Maybe you'd like to tell me why I did all this. You know it better than we do. No, I mean it. Tell me. You weren't making enough money at your job to suit yourself, suit your wife either. That's pretty good. Marilyn would get a big kick out of that one. All right, fellow. We can wait it out as long as you want. We spent nine months on this already. Another few days aren't going to make that much difference. Just as a matter of curiosity, how'd you first start off on this tangent? Whatever gave you the idea that I had anything to do with the holdup? When you started to spend money. New car, new office for yourself, fur coat for your wife. Transferred your two children to that private school. And that makes a holdup man out of me because I wanted to send my kids to a better school? Where'd the money come from? Can you explain that? Don't you think that's my business, Sergeant? Where I get my money, what I do with it? Not when you get it stealing. I'm afraid you're going just a little too far. You insist I'm a thief. I'm going to insist you prove it. All right. Have a look over here, Mr. Garvey. Yeah? Some of the reports on the investigation. Reams of them. They cover everything from the time of the jewel robbery up to late yesterday. It's all right there. Everything from the crime report to signed statements. Well, how would that concern me? Three quarters of the stuff concerns you. Have a look for yourself. I still can't get it straight in my mind. What makes you think I had anything to do with that robbery? You know what this is, Mr. Garvey, this machine right here? No. Some kind of recording apparatus? That's right. It's a tape recorder. You've been taking down this conversation, and why? No, not this one. We've been recording every conversation that took place in your office for the last four months, every word. What do you mean? Just that, Mr. Garvey. Every time you talked on the phone, every visitor you had, it's all down on tape, 25 reels of it. Hmm. Interesting. Is that supposed to frighten me? No, no, we don't care if it frightens you or not. Something else here. Yes? Reports on what you've been doing for the last four months. Daily reports, every movement you made. Is that so? Everywhere you went, everybody you talked to, everything you did. Want to hear a sample? This must be some kind of a joke. That's the only explanation I can think of. May 12th, Thursday. Sergeants Bitteroff and Rafferty. Those are the two officers who were tailing you at the time. You checked in at your new office at 9.38 a.m. At 10.03 a.m., you had a visitor, Kenneth Tyson. You talked to him in your office. Conversations recorded. Tyson left at 10.18 a.m. At 10.32 a.m., you left your office. If you're trying to impress me, I'm afraid it isn't working out very well. You care for a cigarette, you No, thanks. I have my own. All right. Well, I've wasted enough time. Exactly what's the point of all this? Pretty simple. You're responsible for a robbery. We can prove it. We're giving you the chance to make a statement. It's nonsense. Is it? Of course. People following me, checking everything I do, where I spend my money, where I send my kids to school. What's it all about? It doesn't make any sense. <sighs> all right, Mr. Garvey. We've said it before. We can wait it out as long as you want. Look, let's get this thing straight. Let's go back to the beginning and take it step by step. That's fine. The holdup was last fall, wasn't it? Sometime in October? October 7th, Monday, 5.20 in the afternoon. All right, now just what am I supposed to have done? None of your vague references about a new coat for my wife or where I send my kids to school. Let's have some facts. Joe? All right, Mr. Garvey. You went to work as a jewelry salesman for the company 10 years ago. Your friend Tom Ashley, the victim, started the same year. The two of you have been pretty close friends. That's right, I told you that. I will skip the rest of your background for now. Two weeks before the robbery on September 24th, you had a meeting with a Kenneth Tyson. You met in the cafeteria on South Broadway. Tyson's 19 years old, lives with an older sister. He works in a gas station on Olympic Boulevard. He's done some work in your car for you. That's how you happen to know him. Yes, I think I remember the boy. I don't know him well, though. I don't recall the meeting either. No, you know the boy very well. At the time of the meeting, you promised him $1,000 if you'd hold up your friend Tom Ashley. Ridiculous. Tyson agreed to it, and you briefed him on the plan. The following day, you gave him a gun. 32 caliber Smith & Wesson, serial number 362744. Nonsense. Where did you get that information? Tyson. Well, he's lying. Believe me, if he told you that, he's lying. Is he the one who robbed Tom? October 7th, at your direction, he was in the parking lot behind the Hunter Crosswell building. Tom Ashley came out to get in his car. He had his case of sample diamonds with him. Tyson held him up. 
slugged him, took the stones, and got away. Of course, it's obvious. Tyson's trying to say I put him up to it. He's trying to get out of it that Afraid way. not, Mr. Garvey. Boy couldn't have carried off the hold up by himself. Well, of course he could. It's obvious he's trying to cover up. There were six people in the company you worked for who knew that on Mondays, Ashley always took the case of sample diamonds along when he made his calls. Only on Monday you were one of the people who knew that. I suppose you've considered the other five people. They were all checked out at the time. They were all cleared you along with them. But I'm not clear anymore, is that it? This young hoodlum Tyson, you're willing to take his word over mine? After the robbery, he took the case of diamonds to you. That was the next day. You paid him $500 and promised him the other 500 when he got rid of the stones. Oh, I, I suppose I've gotten rid of them, or do I still have them? Two months after the holdup, you contacted a fence up in San Francisco. You drove up there and sold him some of the stones, and he broke them up and sold them. We know who he sold them to. We know what he got for them. Well, this fence, he's supposed to be another good friend of mine. He's still doing business with him. His name's Fred Lawrence. It's a new one on me. I don't know any Fred Lawrence. Can't even recall the name. Now, well, maybe this will help you, Mr. Garvey. Listen to him on the tape recorder. It's real four, isn't it, Ed? Yeah, I think so. They're all labeled there right on the back of the box. Yeah, here we are. Well, what's all this about? Phone conversation, Mr. Garvey. One of the things we recorded from your office. I told you about it before. Let's see. This one was on March 18th. I always thought wiretapping was against the law, or do you pay any attention to that? We didn't tap your telephone line. We recorded everything from dictographs we installed in your store and back in your office. They started recording the day you moved in. That was the 1st of March, wasn't it? I don't know why you're telling me. I can sue you for that, you know. I can sue you for your last dollar. All we're concerned with right now is Fred Lawrence. And you say you don't know him. Why can't you listen to this? This was recorded March 18th in your office. Okay? Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, Mary. Mr. Lawrence? Yeah, sure. Put him on. <coughs> Hi, Fred. How are you? I'm good. No, everything's fine. No, he's at all. I see. No, he's all right. Believe me, he's a good kid. Nice. All right, where? I don't know. It might not be so good if you've seen something here. Only 8 o'clock, 8.30. Okay, fine. It's close to 8.30. See you later. Bye, Fred. Bye. Mr. Garvey, you recognize that? How about it, Garvey? I understand they can do clever things with tape recorders nowadays. There's a way of piecing words together, isn't there? They can record your voice and then fix the tape, take a simple sentence and change the words around to mean just the opposite. You can examine the tape if you like. We didn't make a splice in it. All you'll find are the usual factory splices, just the way it comes from the manufacturer. Well, what difference does it make anyway? There's nothing criminal about that conversation, nothing at all. You told us a few minutes ago you didn't know Fred Lawrence. You never heard of him on that recording. It sounds like you know him pretty well. Well, fairly common name, wouldn't you say? Must be quite a few Fred Lawrences. I didn't happen to remember the name right off. How about Tyson? What? Tyson. You told us you didn't know him well at all. I don't. Well, it didn't sound that way on that tape, did it? You were telling Lawrence that he was all right. You said, believe me, he's a good kid. Now, what you said, now, how about it, mister? How about what? Is this some kind of a frame? What are you trying to make me say? We're not going to make you say anything, Garvey. We work robbery detail. That's the job. Robberies, they pay us to clean them up. I can pay you. What? Never mind, I didn't mean that. I meant I pay my taxes, I pay your salaries, I help to anyway. I don't know why I have to be treated like this. No reason to make a big headache out of this for anybody, Garvey. Now, you engineered a holdup, we can prove that. We're giving you a chance to make a statement, that's all we want here. I've got nothing to say. Make a statement about what? All you're going on is hearsay, circumstantial evidence. You can't say I planned that, Robert. Well, you admit you know Tyson, you know him well. I don't, I admit nothing. What about phone conversation? a fake. They phony those things up all the time. You know it as well as I do. You admitted you know Fred Lawrence. We prove that from the recording. I admit nothing. You don't even know Tyson. Is that what you want to say? I know him. That's all. He worked on my car a couple of times. I don't know him well. All right, sir. I'd like to play you another recording. It's a waste of time. I haven't got the whole day to spend here. i got to get back to my store. I've got a business to operate. Well, this won't take very long. Yeah, here we are. April 5th. A lot of foolishness anyway. How do I know you made those recordings? You could have gotten accurate. Maybe you made them up yourself. There weren't any dictographs. You make those things. There were dictographs, Mr. Garvey. Remember before you moved into that new suite of offices, you had them redecorated? Yeah. There were sound technicians from our crime lab out there working side by side with the painters and carpenters. They installed dictographs in your store and back in your offices. They bugged the entire place. Wiretapping. I'll bring this into court if it's the last thing I do. Look, now, we already told you, Mr. Garvey, it's not wiretapping. We didn't touch your phone lines. We didn't have to. It's an invasion of privacy. I'm going to take this into court. Yeah, well, let's listen to this recording. Might clear up a few things. Clear up what? What are you trying to prove? Okay, Joe. Yeah, it's coming in here now. Date on this is April 5th. Hello? Yeah, Mary. 
Who? Tyson. What does he know I'm in? Yeah, okay, send him back. Yeah, good morning. Hi, Mr. Gary. Yeah, how are you? Come on in, sit down. Thanks. Well, how are you doing anyway? Pretty good. Trying to get a hold of you last week or so. Hard to do, you're not in very much. Pretty busy, yeah, I understand. It's the time of year, you know. It keeps you going. No, I don't want to waste any time. I'd like to know how the deal's working out, though. Going back east to Albany next month, I'd like to get the rest of my money if I could. Well, just like I told you the last time, Ken, I'm sending this up north. I hope to hear it in a couple of days. Yeah, I know. That's what you told me before. It was a pretty heavy job. I could use the money. I mean, if it wasn't so heavy, I wouldn't mind, but I, I got it coming, I think. Huh? Well, of course you do, Ken. There's no question there. It's just that I haven't got it right now. Believe me, you'd have it in a minute if it was mine again. Yeah, but that was the agreement, wasn't it? 500 before the job, 500 after, and have them last October. That's a pretty good stretch. Now, look, Ken, I told you the truth. I just haven't got it. Now, why don't you drop back in a week or so? How about it, Mr. Garvey? What do you say to that? It's ridiculous, that's all. It's an obvious fake. You can look at the tape if you like, inspect it. You can check every one of those 25 reels. We'll play every one of them for you if you want. Fakes, and they're bad ones at that. Now, look, I'll give you both a chance. Either you book me in on a charge or else release me. You try booking me in and I'll sue you for false arrest. I'll break you. I'll sue you blind. I can promise you that. Uh-huh. Release me and I'll get back to work. I'll forget all about it. Now, you name it. Which one? Book me in or release me? Oh, that's fair enough. You're going to give us a choice, huh? You bet it's fair. You can get in a lot of hot water. Now, it's up to you. Which one? You ran a bad bluff, mister. What? We're booking you in. <laughs> are listening to Dragnet, authentic stories of your police force in action. Compare Fatima with any other king-size cigarette. One, Fatima's length filters the smoke 85 millimeters for your protection. Two, Fatima's length cools the smoke for your protection. Three, Fatima's length gives you those extra puffs, 21% longer than standard cigarette size. And in Fatima, you get an extra mild and soothing smoke plus the added protection of Fatima quality. To show our confidence in Fatima, we make this money-back guarantee to every king-size cigarette smoker. Buy a pack of Fatimas. Enjoy Fatima quality, extra mildness, and superbly blended tobaccos. If you're not convinced Fatima is better than the king-size cigarette you're now smoking, just return the pack and the unsmoked Fatimas before August 1st, 1952, and we'll give you your money back plus postage. Fatima. Box 37, New York 1. Remember, each king-size Fatima gives you an extra mild and soothing smoke, plus the added protection of Fatima quality. Switch to Fatima today. Best of all, king-size cigarettes. Thursday, 3.55 p.m., Ed Jacobs and I continued questioning the robbery suspect, Ernest Garvey, Despite the evidence at hand, he still refused to admit any knowledge of the $20,000 jewel theft nine months before. The questioning went on. Garvey's answers became more and more confused. We kept pressing, laying out the case against him step by step. 4 p.m., 4.30. We stayed at it. You must have taken quite a bit of money, didn't you, Garvey? My wife's new fur coat, new car for yourself. Where'd he come from? Now, look, there has to be an answer. Where'd that money come from? Simple. I borrowed it. Where'd you borrow it? Some from friends, some from the banks. I don't see how it concerns you. How much money did you borrow? Don't you think that's my business? Wasn't it about $7,000? Is that about right? Yeah. No, it was more. Well, what's the difference? It's my business. You want to grab that folder, Ed? The one with the dark brown. That's it. Got it. Complete financial file on you, Mr. Garvey. Took us quite a few weeks getting this together. A lot of work. You must like snooping in other people's affairs. No, not especially. It's pretty dull. Here's a copy of your bank statement. It's a photo stat. It doesn't make much sense. What do you mean? Well, we checked your income for that month, amounted to $620.18. Your bank statement here shows you made deposits totaling $760 the same month. Now, how is that possible? Well, for your information, I made a loan that month. That's probably some of the loan money I deposited. I quit my old job that time. I was going in business for myself. I needed the money to redecorate the new store in the office. As simple as that. Yeah. The photo stats of your loan papers right here. The loan was for two thousand dollars. A month right. before that, February, you'd borrowed from another bank. Let's see, uh, for three thousand dollars. Made another one in April, too. That was for fifteen hundred, different bank again. That's right. Do we have to go over this line by line? 
In three months, you made bank loans for $6,500. Besides that, in the same three months, you earned a total of $1,713.88. Together, that makes $8,213.88. What's the point? Copies of your bank statements, Garvey. You have five different savings accounts in five different banks. They show from February to April, the same three months, you made deposits of more than $11,000. Now, how do you explain that? Garvey, any explanation? Almost five o'clock. Can I use the phone? I have to call my wife and let her know. All right. We'll have to listen in on the extension. Conversation's going to be mine. Go ahead. I don't care. Okay. Dial nine to get an outside line. Oh, Give us an explanation. You only had eighty-two hundred dollars. How could you bank eleven thousand? It had to come from somewhere, didn't it? Purely a personal matter. That's all. I borrowed three thousand from a brother of mine who lives back in Minnesota. You'd already made three loans. Why'd you have to borrow from your brother? You mind telling us? Yes. As a matter of fact, I do. Well, mind. that still doesn't balance the books, Mister Garvey. You earned and borrowed eighty-two hundred dollars. You got another three thousand from your brother. You say that's eleven thousand two hundred. You banked eleven thousand dollars. Yes, that's right. You always have to repeat. That'd leave you with two hundred dollars. You and your family live for three months on two hundred dollars. Is that why not? That could easily be. A lot of people do it. Yes, sir, but not your family. I'm getting sick and tired of this. You're trying to tell me you know my family better than I do. What they eat, what they spend, what it takes to support them. We've been on this thing for nine months, Garvey. We put in a lot of hours. We know your family pretty well. If you'd like, I'll tell you the last time you ordered steak from the meat market when you paid your gas bill. The last time your wife bought a pair of shoes. I guess this is standard procedure for you. I'm threatening people. We're not threatening you, Mr. Garvey. We're giving you facts. Here's another file here. It took us over a month to get this one together. The complete record of your expenses from February 1st covers February, March, April, May, June. I hope the police department has a good lawyer, Sergeant. You've got a fair warning. You say you and your... I'm sorry. Go ahead. I hope the police department has a good lawyer, Sergeant. You've got fair warning. I'm going to sue you for your last dollar. Now, you say you and your family lived three months on $200. That doesn't jive with what we've got here. Take a look if you want to. It's lies, all forgeries. It's all lies. I promise you. You're Photostat gonna of the receipt for your wife's coat, Garvey. $1,612.34. That includes the tax paid in full. Photostat of the contract for your new car. Down payment, $2,000. Liquor bill for the big party you threw in March. March 20th. Liquor bill, $387. Catering bill, 194 Full year's check for tuition, room, and board for your kids at the private school you sent them to, $1,864.07. Now, that's only the beginning, Garvey. Comes to a lot more than $200. Have you heard enough? I better try to get my wife again. I have to let her know. Ed, you handle extension. All right, yeah. All right, go ahead. Down on to get outside, Garvey. Yeah, I know. Some more figures here for you, Garvey. It'd be a good idea if you hear them. Bills for two more parties you threw last month. Food bills. Like Why do you have to keep pushing that stuff at me? So you've been sneaking around, finding out about my personal affairs. That's supposed to be good police work, is it? This is the you kind carried of off a thing. robbery, Garvey. We're giving you a chance to make a statement. I told Why you. should I? What for? Give you a statement, have you twisted around, incriminate me? I haven't had anything to do with this kid, Tyson. I better try that call. Yeah, well, dial nine first. I know, I know. You told me. She ought to know I'm trying to get her. What's the matter, Garvey? Don't forget down dial nine. One more report. You're out of here. I'll just play a piece. I don't want to hear it. I'll just play a piece. I think you're out of here. That's the same reel there. Just fan it over there to that other part, Ed. All right. Tyson and Mr. Garvey, same place, the office. 
But you told me on the phone, you say you'd have the dope for me today. You said today, sure. Now, wait a minute, Tyson. I didn't say that at all. I said maybe I'd have it for you. I didn't say definitely. Look, I can't give you what I haven't got. I want the 500, Darby. I need it. I stuck my neck out on a robbery, job. I get five to life. All right, Ed. You couldn't be any plainer. Now, what do you say? Uh, I might have just a minute. Now, I... She never could be satisfied. Always more. She always had to have something else. How do you mean? Your wife? Playing cards, gabbing on the phone, that's all. She just kept writing me day in, day out. I wasn't making enough money. She didn't have any clothes. Kids ought to go to a better school. We ought to have a new house. On and on. I ought to go in business for myself. Make money. Lots of money. Same thing. All the time. Talk, talk, talk. There's only so much you can take. You figured the robbery would solve the problem. Is that it? I guess so. I would have tried anything just to shut her up, get her off my back for a while. I guess you got Tyson out, the other man, too, Fred Lawrence. Yeah, they were picked up this afternoon. Lawrence at the airport, Tyson and the show downtown, all three, all at the same time. What about your wife, Garvey? She knew you planned this robbery. Oh, I didn't tell her. I think she knows, though. Pretty sure she does. Maybe she'll be satisfied now. A lousy money. She had to have it. Didn't even leave me enough to pay off that kid Tyson. Private school for the children. Wall-to-wall carpets in the house. New dishwasher, new coat, new car, everything. She just had to have them. You want to take me? Book me in? I don't care. All right. We'll stop off down the hall, take your statement. Sure, I don't care. All right, let's go. I'll say just a minute, huh? Yeah. It'll only take a minute. The names were changed to protect the innocent. On November 4th, trial was held in Superior Court, Department 87, City and County of Los Angeles, State of California. In a moment, the results of that trial. And now, here is our star, Jack Webb. Thank you, George Fenneman. Friends, I make it a habit to carry two packs of Fatimas around with me. One's for my smoking, and the second one's for smokers I see with other king-size cigarettes. All I have to say is, here, compare Fatima. I know they're going to be sold on Fatimas the next time we meet. How about comparing Fatima yourself? You'll find Fatima's length filters the smoke 85 millimeters, cools the smoke, all for your protection. You get those extra puffs because Fatima is 21% longer than standard cigarette size. And Fatima gives you an extra mild and soothing smoke, plus the added protection of Fatima quality. Prove it today. Buy Fatima. Ernest W. Garvey and Kenneth Tyson were tried and convicted of first-degree robbery, one count, and received sentences as prescribed by law. Fred Lawrence was tried and convicted of receiving stolen property, one count. First-degree robbery is punishable by imprisonment from five years to life. Receiving stolen property is punishable by a prison term of not more than five years. just heard Dragnet, a series of authentic cases from official files. Technical advice comes from the office of Chief of Police W.H. Parker, Los Angeles Police Department. Heard tonight were Barney Phillips, Vic Perrin, and Eddie Firestone. Script by Jim Moser. Music by Walter Schumann. Hal Gibney speaking. Fatima Cigarettes, best of all king-size cigarettes, has brought you Dragnet, transcribed from Los Angeles. February 18th, hear the Gala City Service Silver Radio Jubilee on NBC.